the burning mirror on the top of the Alexandria lighthouse, which, in addition to guiding ships into harbor, had two other functions. The first, being an early warning system, enabling watchers to see ships long before arrival at the Egyptian coast. The second, being in cases where ships turned out to be hostile, by directing the mirror at a certain angle to reflect and intensify the sun's rays, and focusing it on incoming enemy ships, the ships would be satellite at sea. I was flipping through an antique German language encyclopedia, Myers Conversations Lexicon, 1903 edition. I came across a page about lighthouses. The German word for lighthouse is Luchturm, or light tower in English. But the labels aroused my curiosity. Festfuhr, fixed fire, or focused fire. Drafur, rotating fire. Elektrisches Blitzfuhr, electric lightning fire. Fetges Glühlichtfuhr, oil lit fire. Zwilling Sappert Fuhr Elektrisches Blitzfuhr, twin machine for electrical lightning fire. I'm fluent in German, but these expressions for lighthouses were unfamiliar. Modern German speaks of Lich signal, or light signal, the Luchting, or lighting, and Lampen, lamps, when talking about lighthouses. The book makes it sound like the lighthouse could be used as a weapon. Even in the 1900s, lighting was not commonly called lightning, or even fire. The German word Blitz apart from its use to describe thunderstorm lightning, was used in World War I and II, when referring to something active or used in attack. To this day, German military calls their lighthouses Warnfuhr, or warning fire in English. The idea of lighthouses as weapons seemed presumptuous to me at first, so I left this thought unpublished for two years. Blitzfuhr merely means flashing light, and Festfuhr just means constant light. Drefuhr is simply rotating light. Nothing mysterious about it. No need to read a mystery into everything right. So I didn't express this thought due to lack of evidence. But a few days ago, I came across the quote you hear at the beginning of this video. Subsequently I learned that at least half a dozen ancient Arabic sources from medieval times, references even more ancient times, in which lighthouses were used as weapons. This is a painting by Giulio Perigi, born 1571 in Florence, purporting to show the death ray of Archimedes, a mirror that used the sun to burn the Roman ships. This is from the book Thesaurus Opticus, by the Iraqi astronomer Ibn al-Haytham, born in 965. I see three reflectors being used to start fires on ships. This is the Lavoisier burning lens, image dated to 1770. Similar burning lenses were demonstrated by inventors Joseph Priestley, born 1733, and Carl Scheele, born 1742. Mainstream thought categorically denies that any such thing is possible. I'm a little confused by the outright denial of the possibility. I've personally witnessed the convex magnifying glass burn paper, as in this video. The ancients were using convex mirrors or convex glass, so why shouldn't it be true? Why should the ancients have gone for thousands of years without noticing that the focused sun rays can burn things? Maybe that's why, on most old paintings, the Alexandria lighthouse had shown a smoking gun, rather than being a beacon of light. The most tiresome aspect of alternative history research is this the implied belief that our ancestors were incapable of anything interesting. God no. This post says. They might as well be telling us that absolutely nothing interesting happened in the past. This image shows a Fresnel lens, pronounced Fresnel lens. Different types of Fresnel lenses have been in use in lighthouses since the early 1800s, according to the mainstream timeline. A Fresnel lens can produce heat of more than 1000 degrees Celsius or 1800 Fahrenheit. That means it burns wood, plastic, and even metals. This is a 1845 blueprint for a dioptric apparatus. Dioptric means that it's convex glass, capable of refracting light, or turning it into a laser-like beam. So, we have here, a device, stationed in most lighthouses, capable of producing a 1000 degrees hot beam. Maybe my idea of weaponized lighthouses isn't as fantastical as I thought. The Fresnel lens is claimed to have been invented in 1819, even though there are examples of it from 1789, Thomas Rogers, Lighthouse in Portland, 1748, Georges Louis Leclerc, 1788, Marquis de Condorcet, and 1811, David Brewster. It's interesting how hazy historians are over what did and didn't exist in the 1700s. Here's a video where a random guy uses a small Fresnel lens to burn metal. Can you imagine what a bigger Fresnel lens is capable of? 
The term parabolic, used in the ancient texts regarding the burning of ships, refers to a curve, similar to that of a diptych or convex mirror. A post on a Civil War discussion forum provides insight into how Fresnel lenses were confiscated by the military during what is known as the Civil War. In 1851, a group of military officers produced a lengthy report, 800 plus pages, criticizing the generally poor condition of lighthouses, lighthouse keepers, and the USL. Congress responded by creating the Lighthouse Board in 1852. The board was a combination of the Navy officers, Army engineers, the Secretary of the Treasury, and a few other civilians, usually at least one scientist or professor. The membership of the board changed from year to year, but it brought much-needed improvements and oversight. The Atlantic, Gulf, and Pacific coasts, plus the Great Lakes and Mississippi River Valley, were divided into lighthouse districts. Each district had an inspector, a U.S. Navy officer, usually a lieutenant commander or commander, and an engineer, a army officer, usually holding a rank between lieutenant and major. Engineers designed new lighthouses and oversaw construction and repairs. Inspectors checked stations quarterly to ensure keepers were doing their jobs. Keepers were still appointed by the local superintendent of lights, a secondary title held by some collectors of customs. Numerous civil war were involved with lighthouses during the 1850s, either as board members, engineers, inspectors, or assigned special duty to a specific lighthouse project. They also rapidly introduced the cutting-age Fresnel lens from France. A Fresnel lens is made of prisms that concentrate light, rather than simply reflecting it, and were a massive improvement all forms of earlier lighthouse optics. Eventually every US lighthouse had a Fresnel lens. Along with the more obvious federal properties seized by the Confederate government like forts, they also assumed control of lighthouses. Soon after Fort Sumter, the Confederate Lighthouse Board ordered all Southern lighthouses darkened. The reasoning was twofold. The lights were more helpful to the Union Navy than the Confederates, and the Fresnel lenses were valuable items to be removed and secured for the duration of the war. Since most lighthouse keepers were local residents, most of them complied voluntarily with this order. Even if a keeper was reluctant to follow Confederate orders, the local populace and government officials could ensure compliance or take matters into their own hands. Fresnel lens were removed. The Confederates intentionally burned or blew up a number of lighthouses to deny them to the Union, including Morris Island, South Carolina, outside Charleston Harbor, Tybee Island, mouth of the Savannah River, Georgia, St. Simons Island, near Brunswick, Georgia, and Sand Island, southwest of Fort Morgan, at the mouth of Mobile Bay. Other lighthouses are alleged to have been blown up or otherwise destroyed by either side of the war. In 1939, the Lighthouse Service merged with the U.S. Coast Guard. I had assumed lighthouses were civilian, not a military. Instead, a, lighthouses were made and run by Navy and Army officers and engineers. b, lighthouses were attacked and ordered shut down during the Civil War. c, Fresnel lenses were removed and locked away during the Civil War. If lighthouses can be used as weapons, all of this makes perfect sense. But if they were mere light beacons, one wonders why they need to be managed and maintained by Navy and Army. Lighthouses have been among the first to be attacked in cases of war. Let's take the Lighthouse of Genoa as a random example, said to have been first built in 1128. The tower also played a part, early in its career, in the ongoing feud between the Gulfs and Ghibellines. During one battle, the Ghibellines damaged it considerably. In 1318 and again in 1321, it was decided to dig a defensive trench around the tower, the better to protect it from damage in battle. In 1528, when Genoa was under French military occupation, the Genoese Admiral Andrea Doria attacked the harbor with 13 galleas, regaining control of the city. During these events, the Lanterna was badly damaged. The tower was shelled during the bombardment of Genoa by the French in 1684. Management of the tower is under the authority of the Lighthouse Command Zone of the Marina Militar, and is directed from its center in La Spezia, which oversees all of the lighthouses in the region. The Marina Militar has been responsible for all lights on the Italian coast since 1910, and employs both military and civil technicians for the purpose. I let this serve as one example of hundreds, where the lighthouse was attacked in war. A skeptic might argue that having light at night is important for military purposes. But lighting is also important for attacking side and not a logical priority target. Lighthouses before the 1700s, we are told, were not searchlights, but mere towers that lit up the surrounding area. 
The attacking military taking away the light source seems self-defeating to me, unless lighthouses doubled as weapons, in which case they should be the first target to be taken out. The first lighthouse in the US is claimed to have been Boston Light. The first keeper of Boston Light was George Worthilake, who drowned, along with his wife and daughter, when returning to the island in 1718. During the American Revolution, the original lighthouse was held by British forces and was attacked and burnt on two occasions by American forces. As the British forces withdrew in 1776, they blew up the tower and completely destroyed it. The lighthouse was eventually reconstructed in 1783, to the same 75-foot height as the original tower. In 1856 it was raised to its present height of 98 feet, and a new lantern room was added, along with a 12-sided second-order Fresnel lens. Lighthouses have served as military targets throughout history. Shining a light on this topic reveals that lighthouses could even be used as weapons today. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.